just putting a little bit of uh, the epoxy around the uh, the edge in here take a cre an old credit card or something slice it up this is like a 3m up two-part epoxy they use in uh, GM products and cars to glue cars together so here's the little plug I took out of the octagon box just roughly sanded it up a little bit put a little dab on here Yeah, this is messy stuff. I'm gonna get it all over me. Right, put that over there. Come on, me some water. Oop, 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 get over there. Get it on both sides. And put a little piece of tape over there to hold it in place, and then I'll fill in the other side. Way too much. I just cut another piece on there, yes. Good enough for now. I'll have to sand it down a little bit. Paint it black. Put this under the lamp here. As hot as I can get it. Yo, that's hot. This here, I'm just painting this one white. Got the holes all drilled and plugged. Yo. So bake that one. I bought some uh, uh, this reflective paint. I'm gonna try this stuff out. Rustolian makes it. It's a reflective paint. You can spray it on your mailboxes or on your bicycles or anything, and it reflects uh, headlights. So I'm gonna try that on the inside of the speedometer and tachometer. And then also on the reflective rings. These reflective rings reflect the light back down on the numbers. So uh, it's pretty important to get this. So I'm going to spray them white first. I'm going to try some of this on there. And uh, we'll see how that works. Middle of February. 60 degrees outside. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, look at that. 42 in my garage. 60 degrees outside. I got one meter done here. All finished on the back. I just didn't silicone in the lens yet. I just wanted to test it out and it works a lot better. I got three bulbs in there so now you can see the numbers all the way around. Um, I'll show you that later tonight. And uh, for the other one there, I'm just waiting for the bulbs to come in. I got a couple parcels there. 
yesterday. In the mail. You always have to crack the boxes open at the border. Make sure you're not smuggling any contraband in. But this is the mirror. I've been looking at mirrors for a long time on. Hey, that's a note in here. There's eBay Ed and other. Thanks, Ed. This was a private guy selling this mirror. And I wanted the. Uh, the old style look, kind of like the the ones they used back in the 70s, and most of them sell on eBay for around 20 bucks to 25 bucks. You'll see maybe some of the original ones, the other ones are going for 37, 39 bucks or something like that that are kind of rusty. Uh, this one was five dollars plus shipping. Nobody bid on it but me. So, I, and I think the shipping was six fifty nine. So, I think it cost me eleven dollars fifty nine cents that one. So that was a good, a pretty good buy. I'm cheap. And then, oh, that's no, that's my receipt. Yeah, not Paul's. And then, oh, maybe I didn't open that one yet. I ordered all my cables about a year and a half, two years ago. I needed every single cable. And the only one that I didn't order was the uh, uh, the TAC cable. So this was the last cable I needed. So whenever I get a little bit of extra money, I order at parts. <clears throat> this cost, um, I think, around $20, $19.59. This is my box. I've got all the cables in there. <clears throat> Rear brake cables, front brake cables, speedo tack, everything's in there. It's just about five o'clock Sunday evening. I'm not sure, was it the 19th of February, something like that? And uh, yesterday was a record day, 68 degrees, middle of February. We beat the old record in 1949 by three or four degrees. There's my speedo and tack. The uh, speedo is just ready to be siliconed together. It's done, and I'm just going to wait for these light bulbs, these LED bulbs, to come in for the tack. Should be in another week, ten days, and then uh, I'll silicone them all together and show you them. They'll be done. I got uh, two more main projects that have to be done. My carburetors. I got the two original ones all apart in pieces, and then I, I bought a box of. Uh, um, extra parts on eBay I don't know I got a deal for like 10 bucks or something like that and uh, and then I think I've got a carb kit pretty sure about carb kit yeah there's the carb kits in there so I think I'm gonna start tackling these carburetors get them out of the way and then one more thing uh, where is it my transmission that's gonna be the last thing that needs to be fixed and uh, with those transmissions, the lay shaft bearing is a ball bearing. And especially after being 45, 47 years old, I guess, um, that roller bearing, everybody replaces them with, uh, that ball bearing, everybody replaces them with a roller bearing. So that's my, uh, my next project after the carbs, just tackle that transmission. And that bearing's not cheap. It's like fifty dollars for that bearing. Now I bought these um, exhaust ring nuts here a couple of weeks ago. I think I showed you in one of my videos. They fit beautifully. They're brand freaking new, fourteen dollars. And my buddy was over and uh, he started threading and looking at it. And then we stuck my finger in here. I could wiggle the, I could wiggle the uh, uh, the gasket there. And then right away I started thinking, oh no, <laughs> there's a different thread length. 
You see the difference in thread length from the original one? This is the original one, and that's the newer one. Well, on the 850 Commandos, they use the shorter thread, the shorter thread length, and then with a couple of rings in here that sit between the exhaust goes in first, then a couple of rings, and then you put the uh, the collar on. Uh, I honestly prefer the longer ones just because uh, you got more thread, more thread holding in the aluminum. You know, on this one here, what is there? You know, five or six threads being held in there. So, but anyways, uh, you can buy the uh, the rings. I think they're 11 bucks US to put the the ring clamps in there. But uh, I honestly prefer more more threads in there. Less likely to spin out, less likely to pull threads out, which is pretty common in these things, is to, to burr these threads right off. So <laughs> that's another uh, that's another day. Those took these apart two years ago. You know, <laughs> I don't even know what I have here. I'm not sure which is the original. I think this is the one that I bought offline. Yeah, it's got the newer, it's got the newer uh, tickler bleeder there. So this is. This must be all the parts that I bought offline. And then these are the two original ones. Um, what are they called? The 932. Yeah, 932. Or 930 Amo Carbs. It's got RB. And this one I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's L. And see, 930. So this is a left hand carb. They're marked left and right. So, uh, it's probably important to have those back in the same way. And this is the one that I bought, which is nice and clean. And I think that says L. Yeah, L30. Probably a newer model of carb. There's a guy on YouTube, um, Lunmad, L-U-N-M-A-D, he's a British guy, he works on these Triumphs and Nortons all the time, he's got a bunch of YouTube videos out there, Lunmad, he's the best at these ammo carbs as far as I'm concerned, I watched his videos, you know, he's, he knows exactly what to look for, you know, it, it's, uh, he's really good, and, uh, I've rebuilt these before, but 30 years ago, 35 years ago, a long time ago. So, I'm going to shut this off and figure out what I have here and where to start. Okay, I got some semblance of order here. That's why I've been putting this off because uh, it's been two years. I'm trying to get them all sorted out which parts belong to which carb and why I bought this one. And I bought it for a reason. And I remember I broke something taking this apart. These carburetors on the bike were full of water and they were seized. The uh, the slide, uh, yeah, the slide's in this one here still, and they were both seized in there. I soaked them with diesel fuel and penetrating oil and just slowly wiggled them up and down, got them out. Then I had to take some emery cloth and clean them up and WD-40 them. And this one I got working pretty good. You can see it sliding in and out of there pretty good. And this one, I, I did get it freed up and moving, but even even now it's it's not good it's it's too stiff it's sticking in there uh, I got to clean up some more or or use this slide off this carburetor to go into this one but all the car body, bodies on the 930s are identical there's left and right you can see where the plugs are in on the left side and on on the uh, this is the left carb the plugs on the right side and vice versa so that's the difference there somebody's drilled that plug out but when I took apart these float bowls, they were full of water and rust. You can see the inside all crowded up. I got to somehow save these. But this one, when I took it apart, um, I was able to get the uh, the uh, the drain off it there. I think that's the one there. I was able to get that one off. This one snapped off. This one broke right off in there. No way to save it. It's just crowded right in there. And that's why I bought this carb on the internet 
just to get this float bowl. And uh, uh, like I said, I got the whole thing for like 10 or 15 bucks. It was just dirt cheap to get that carb. And then it came with a bunch of new parts, you know, it came with uh, um, these are the emulsion tubes, I think, or pickup tubes. It came with that, like I say, the newer style uh, bleeder on it. Uh, the springs are, it's got a couple new springs here. It came with a new jet. What, or one new uh, needle, float needle, came with that kit. And uh, just got one gasket. You can see on this old carburetor where it took where somebody made, you know, somebody made this out of a piece of paper, um, this float bowl gasket. So there, I got them all sorted out from left to right. So some of the variables in these carbs are needles, the taper on the needle. You could have a sharp, short taper, longer taper. So I got to check that. Uh, I'd like to really put this slide in this one, but you can buy different order different slides You know or they, they may come for different years even and it, it's the angle uh, We're gonna get a little better view of this This creates the the Venturi effect here with this angle and there's different angles in carbs at least in Honda's and Yamaha's Probably in Amos too. So I got to make sure that the angle on this one is the same as that one you know, it might be different on the combat in the 850s, I'm not sure, but that angle's got to be exact. And uh, the needle's got to be exact. Uh, the jetting, I can rejet them, clean the jets up. So there's lots to look at on these t three carbs to make two good ones. But I think this one's going to be the easiest one to start with first. Clean the float bowl up, start cleaning it all out, make sure all of the all the holes are clean because they were really corroded and gummed up. I hope I don't have to take that welch plug out to uh, clean those jets out, orifices out. So I'm going to start on that and I'll keep you up to date with any issues. So here's the uh, kind of banjo bolt that's broke off in that bad float ball. And then I got looking at this, somebody's jammed a piece of brass in there to make this little uh, cup intake cup so that's garbage that's garbage that's all garbage not using any of that stuff not using that gasket so here's the the newer one off this newer carb I got here I cleaned the bolt up good screen when I cleaned this one up this one's melted a little bit or bent down, but I cleaned it all up. And uh, that screen's a little bit squished in there, but I'll clean I'll clean that screen up a little bit better. I don't know where the other screen is. Guess there isn't one. Okay, I'm gonna keep plugging away. Okay, pretty much got all the parts that I don't need in here. And uh, even the, the choke slides, I don't know if you can see that in there, how pitted that one is. Um, that new carb that I got on eBay, newer carb, came with two new choke slides. And uh, yeah, they just fit in there, they, they work nice. I end up using the good slide from the newer carburetor in this one. And the cutouts are identical. Uh, there is varying degrees of cutouts you can buy on these things. Race bikes and stuff. The needles, the needles were identical, but I ended up going with the original ones and just, uh, I, I clean them up with uh, some real fine steel wool. And it just polishes them right up beautifully. That's all you need there. Came with a couple new um, cable connectors, which was good because mine were, Two of them were, two or three of them were rotted right out. I couldn't even get the uh, cable out of the holder. Probably have to drill them out. But I did get two of them out and clean them all up. Got that ready to go. Got the new jets in here. Main jets and uh, the pickup. That's ready to go. Floats are ready to go. They're all cleaned up ready to go. The only two things I got left to do is to really clean this up and hope I can get all the orifices. Hopefully I can get uh, all the jet holes cleaned right out. 
I'm going to put them in a, a sonic cleaner and uh, I just make one and uh, leave it in for a half hour or so blow all the holes out see if that works if not keep soaking it if that doesn't work I got a buddy with a, a commercial grade sonic carb cleaner and I can bring them down to him and leave them in overnight but I think I can clean those up here then uh, it's ready to put back together um, the springs uh, it came with two brand new uh, uh, cable springs I think that's the choke spring that one and this is the main spring and it came with one new spring the main spring so I cleaned I took picked the best of the two and I cleaned this one all up so it's good to go so just clean those two bodies out and put it back together I think it'll be good